I version everything that I install on my computer with Git. Let me show you. The repo behind me is called dot files repo and I'll explain why later on. But if you look down here, I have, for example, a VS code file. And these are all the plugins that I have installed on my VS code IDE. This is not a list where I actually go and manually install them. These plugins will be installed automatically this actual list. Huge benefit is because I could have multiple computers or I might want to add and remove plugins later on. And just with running a single command, it will install all the plugins every time on a freshly installed computer or if I've changed my plugin list and I want to update my other computer. And what's even more awesome, if you're using something like code spaces, it will actually read your dot files repo under your account and automatically install everything for you. VS Code plugins, SSH config, and so much more. How amazing is that? Look at their docs behind me. That now means your local development environment is going to be the same as your cloud development environment as another computer that you also have. What else can we do with the magic of dot files? Well, actually so much. I've installed my git config, my npm global packages, my brew packages, vim config, ssh config, bash profile ssh, the list goes on and you can keep adding to this over time. Before we get into the details of this video, I've created a free checklist download for you project maintainers so you can make sure your open source projects are welcoming and stand out from the crowd. I'll leave a link in the description below. Reinstalling your computer can be such a pain. You need to remember all your various configs and all the extensions you installed and other packages. But did you know there's an easier way with something called dot files? Why would I want my dot files config on GitHub? Because I can back up, restore, sync all my preferences and settings. Not only when you're reinstalling your computer, but also keeping multiple computers in sync. And if you want to change something on one computer, it can be exactly the same on the other computer and your cloud IDE like code spaces that I mentioned before. Your dot files might be the most important files on your machine. You can learn from the community, discover other tools and tricks and tips that the other community members are using. Share what you've learned with the rest of the community. I know what you're thinking, but what about my private files like SSH keys and tokens and all these sorts of things? As always, if it's a public or even private repo, you should never add these private files to the repository. So how to get started? There are so many ways. What I do and recommend using is init.files repo to set up your project. This is the repo behind me. It initializes your dot file project, which is really easy and quick to get started. They say get up and running in five minutes. It takes like 30 seconds, even less. What you do is you copy this curl command and that will download the script file. And the next thing you do is you need to change the permissions of the file so that we can run it, make it an executable. And then we run the script. What I'm gonna do is put the test flag at the end because I've already got this set up, but it's gonna go through all the same steps so I can show you, it just won't create those files because they're already created. So let me start. Test mode enabled, brilliant. Where do you want your dot files repository to be? I have everything as default. So I hit enter. Shall we add dot bot as a sub module? It's a good idea, so let's do that. Do you want to clean your home directory of broken links added by dot bot? Yes. It says I found a bash profile. Do you want to dot bot it? And what that means is it will move the file to your repository that we're creating now and sim link it to your home directory. So don't worry, nothing will break. It will still be sim linked but the file itself will be versioned. Yes, we wanna do that. It's also found a bash RC. Let's do the same with that as well. If you use ZSH, it's found a config file. Yes. Should I run an installer necessary to git commit? Yes, please. Should I make an initial commit? Yes, please. So I've hit enter and it's done all those things. And you can see the steps it's gonna make. You can look at that in more details. Yours might look slightly differently depending on the config files that you have. I've hit enter and what you will see is something very similar to mine, but I have a few more files than you because I've been adding to this over a few months. Let's open this up in VS Code, it's much easier to see. What you will get is your .bot folder. You will get other config files, for example, like SSH, and you will see the install file runs a config. In this case, I might have renamed this to core. It might not have that by default. The reason I did that is I split up my installer files because as this grew, and as I kept on running it, but don't worry, you can keep running it, it's idempotent, which means you can run it and it will make 
any necessary changes, but if you run it again, it knows what state it was in before and will not make any changes if they're not needed. So you can run this over and over again. So by running all my dot file config, it wasn't causing any harm. However, it took longer, longer to run. So I split them out into different config files. Therefore, if I've changed my VS Code plugins on one computer and I want to update it on another computer, I can just run that config file. There's no harm, again, in running the whole lot. I just wanted it to run faster. So I split them out into brew, into managers, into npm, VS Code, and this conf file is all of them. So you can see it just runs the individual configurations, core, brew, managers. So by default, core will run for me, which means it will symlink all my configuration and install ZSH, but nothing else. So I recommend starting off by putting everything in one file and then you can change it and spit it out later on. So let's actually do an example. Let me actually show you how it works. Let's go to the VS Code config. It's gonna load the file VS Code. So let's go to that VS Code file and we can see these are the plugins it's gonna install when I run this. But let's say I want to add another plugin. Normally you would go to here and you would search for it and click install. So let's say for example, I want this Markdown Lint plugin. Usually you just click install, but then I have to do that on my other computers. I'll have to do it when I reinstall my computer and so on. So what we'll do instead is we'll click on this, We'll grab the unique name, that's the user and the name of the plugin, and then we will add it to the end of my list. As you can see from my readme, my .files repo, I've got an example, which is actually the VS Code one. I can run this. So just to double check, this is not installed. As you can see, Markdown Lint says install, so it's not installed. Let's install it. It's going through all the list. It's saying already installed, already installed. So it's gonna skip those plugins. And then we'll see at the end, because it added it to the bottom of the list, the new extension added. And then I can commit and push that and have it available to code spaces and my other computers. So now you can see at the end, the VS Code Markdown Lint was successfully installed. If we go back to VS Code, there is no install button because it is already installed. And I know what you're thinking, I could just click install instead of doing this. However, this allows you to version your computer. So as you add and remove plugins, you can version it. It makes it so much easier to maintain your computer setup. So when I get a new computer, I literally run the command to run all the configs. And I come back 10 minutes later and everything is set up. Let me show you, for example, my NPM globals. These will be installed. My Vim config will be set up and installed. Even Brew, let me show you, for example, it will install Docker for me, Git, grep, all these useful things that I use all the time. And then even my Brewcast, so Discord, Dropbox, WhatsApp. Oh, don't want WhatsApp anymore. Let me remove that. Signal. Oh, is that Docker twice? Docker. I do have Docker twice. I think we can remove that. There we go. But again, as I make improvements to one computer, it makes improvements to all the computers. Just to reiterate, as you make improvements to one computer, it makes improvements to all your computers. There will be a link in the description below to my dot .files repo if you wanna have a look and see, but I wouldn't recommend forking it. I'd recommend starting from the beginning and taking ideas from mine and using it for yours and customizing it further. I don't think forking dot .files is useful, but using them for ideas and getting started is a really good idea. Let me know what you like about my dot .files project. Let me know what improvements you notice. I'm sure you'll notice so many things. Maybe some plugins that I'm using but I'm not really kept up to date or there are better plugins that have now replaced that. I look forward to seeing your dot .files. So do head over to the Eddie Hub organization on GitHub and start a discussion on the dot .files that you're using and share a link to your repo so we can all have a look and start your projects. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I go live and post a video. I'll see you in our Discord between live streams and videos. Link in the description below.